you know, the taps microphone, the little t- t- that you get. Mm-hmm. It's hip, uh, not hip up up, uh, <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax, HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to episode 315 of the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs, and joining me is Donna Grindle of Cardin. Good afternoon, Donna. Good afternoon, David. So I don't want to give it away yet, but I, I started to say... Welcome to the Help Me with Hip Hop podcast. <laughs> but we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's rampant out there. <laughs> Some craziness going on. Mm-hmm. But uh, but our topic today, we are going to talk about something that's relatively new. Uh, there's a new breach notification bill that's been introduced. So um, we'll, we'll get into that. I know when, when you and I saw this, we were like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, chalk one up for us. But we'll we'll dive into to that and what that may mean if it passes. And you know, the, the more the bad guys do, the more likely that is to pass quickly. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's not looking yeah. good. Yeah, I know. So, uh, but before we get into that, uh, Hippo Boot Camp August edition completely sold out. Thanks for everybody who has purchased and will be attending. Absolutely, look forward to spending the time with you. I know we had somebody had to cancel and it immediately was filled. Yeah. Yep. So, so uh, I think we got one other already on the wait list, but yeah, it's cool. But I'm excited. If you want to, if you want to know what that's all about, go to the hippabootcamp.com. You can see some information there. You can't purchase anything yet, but um, we will have a, a spring edition coming up at some point. We haven't, haven't settled on that yet. Maybe yeah. in person. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> We got to see what all the other variants do we, first. We got a lot to get through between now and then. Oh, I know. It's like, wait a minute. Let's just. <laughs> uh, we we tried to rush 2020 and then we tried to slow down 2021. <laughs> <laughs> slow down. Whoa, Bessie. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I sent an email to my accountant last week and I'm like, oops, it's already July. I was supposed to meet with you <laughs> before now. <laughs> Can we still do our, you know, mid-year meeting? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Before it becomes the end-of-year meeting. I know. It's terrible. Terrible stuff. <sighs> uh, anyway, so a uh, couple things I want you to do if you're a listener. Make sure you go uh, to our website. Check it out. Help me with HIPAA.com. Lots of cool stuff there if you want to donate. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to do a shout-out to George. Thanks for the donation, dude. Appreciate it. And uh, he's always... Uh, Donating and helping the calls, not only financially, but also sends in some some great questions and some other things for us to go over. So, uh, and he's been to the boot camp with it twice now. Yeah, he he's he's an all around good guy for us. Yeah, he's fantastic. So uh, yeah, so thanks so he, again. He sent us an idea about National Cybersecurity Awareness Month too. Mm-hmm. So we got it. We got to get back to that. But yeah, we're gonna put him on payroll. You can get paid the same way, dude, to do this podcast. <laughs> That's right. George, if you're interested. In fact, I'll pay you twice what I'm getting paid. <laughs> it's like our guarantee, double your money back. That's right. It's the only podcast that offers a double your money back guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you like today's podcast, be sure to share it out. We like being shared. Yeah. Yep. We, we need some more shares. We need We need to... Uh, uh, increase slightly the number of regular downloads. There's a thing right. in podcast world. We're a niche of a niche of a niche, or as some people say, niche. That's right. So if but, we make your day sunny, then why don't you share? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, t- <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just not even right. I, I can't know, do I the know. share thing, though. I can't do that. <laughs> I got you, babe. <laughs> oh man. So let's dive into some HIPAA. Say what? <laughs> this is funny. We're totally here. We got to so, chuckle. I mean, so a few weeks ago, we, we introduced to you guys, especially if you went to the website and looked at it, but we introduced a chart that somebody created that had HIPAA, H I P A A, on one side and HIPAA. <laughs> 
H I P P A, or as we like to always say, hip hop, hip hop, Yes. Anyway, had had those side by side. Obviously, a joke, but it went into talking about, you know, what are the differences between the two? Completely supposed to have been a joke. Yeah, if you read the bottom column, it says one's actually a law, and the other's made up by people on the internet during COVID. <laughs> I know. It's like it actually says that. Mm-hmm. However. Donna, would you like to say what Twitter has now done to this? <laughs> and, uh, the, <laughs> in one conversation, the guy that made it, he was like, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> we were all like, this is awesome, dude. This is awesome. And uh, <laughs> they have now started using this to prove that they're right. <laughs> because, again, they're only reading the first. They don't read the bottom. They don't read the bottom. Just the part that makes them look right, and then it only makes it worse. When I mean, there's and we've got a screenshot of a, one that literally where the guy's like, "This, this is what I'm talking about, not hip, uh, it's hip up 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 that I'm talking about." And then he just look and then goes on a rant, and it's like, "Could you make mm-hmm. yourself look more stupid?" No, you know, you've cell phoned. And you don't even know. Lack of self awareness is is something that um, it's, it's it's just, because we're a society that e- that educates itself with headlines. Mm-hmm. We don't read the content of the article. We don't even look at the content of the person. <laughs> it's all <laughs> headlines. Everything mm. that we know. Did you say head lice? Yeah, because that's have, what I it is. I should have said that. Yeah, yeah. should have. Yeah, so. I don't, you know, and I'm bad about looking at headlines and making a determination as to whether or not I want to read the article, but at least I don't get my news and my facts from just a headline. Yes. Because believe it or not, headlines can be misleading on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's certainly a, one, you know, nothing makes me more crazy than catching myself not making it all the way through the end of the article, not just the headline. I didn't make it all the way to the end of the article. And if I find myself, because I I make sure I read the beginning, the Mm -hmm. end, and then the details. Yeah, because sometimes, especially when you, (laughs) I've written articles like this before, where the last paragraph flips the whole thing on its head. Yeah. (laughs) And so if you didn't read the last paragraph, you didn't realize that everything else before that (laughs) was taking you down the wrong path. (laughs) That's probably where I learned to read the end. Right after the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so reading like, your stuff. Yeah, it's so like awful. one of these these movies. It's like, I don't know, what's a crazy movie? Like Vanilla Sky or something. Yeah. You go way back. You know, you get to the end of the movie, like, what? <laughs> what or, just happened? You, know, you want to go way back, you get back to the, what was it? The Hartman. What was it? <sighs> he had one show where he played the uh, psychologist. And then the then he had Larry Daryl and Daryl, and he played the innkeeper with Suzanne Plachette as his wife again. And and he at the end of that second series, they played it like it was a dream, and he woke up and he was really in the first series, still in the same pattern. <laughs> the whole second series was a dream for years. It was brilliant. Yep. So, but this this is not a dream. This has just become a nightmare. Yeah, and it's However, gotten worse this week. I I recommend everybody bef- before it gets pulled or disappears because you never know which. Go to our website, <laughs> dot com, and click on the links to, to take you to Twitter. There's one there where a guy has done his own video. <laughs> it's hysterical, man. And he's talking about HIPAA and. He's basically the whole thing is about how HIPAA is overused, but he's he's doing all this stuff. Like one of them, he's you know he's he's playing all the parts, right? So he's yeah. playing the part of the police officer, and he's like, "Excuse me, sir, have you been drinking?" And the guy's holding up a beer can, going, "Uh, HIPAA? <laughs> like, <laughs> like you can't ask me that." <laughs> he's on a playground, going down a slide, and this is not a little bitty dude, man. <laughs> Big burly beard. He's awesome. Yeah, I love so every, it. every time he's, you know, he says something like, you know, somebody asked me this question and one of them was even my wife asked me why I was out last night and came home and, you know, and was 
had the smell of this on me and the look of that on me. And I just looked at her and was like, hip hop. <laughs> yeah, it, I love the way it ends. You can't, can't, can't mess that up because the way it ends is awesome. Yeah, but, you know, basically you're just making fun of like HIPAA has become the excuse that everybody uses for everything to not answer a question. Yeah. If I don't want to answer your question, HIPAA. HIPAA. <laughs> you're violating. And, and only a very small s- subset of the population would that apply to and only to very specific questions that they were asked. Mm-hmm. But it's... and. Boy, this week it went off the rails, well, for obvious reasons, if you pay attention to the news, of everybody just, you know, all these running jokes, asking me if I floss. HIPAA, I'm not telling you. <laughs> can't ask me that. Oh, that was funny. You can't ask me if I floss. I, and I don't know what's more funny, the fact that the video is that funny or the other people are going, I don't see the humor in this. Why is everybody laughing? I know. That's what makes it so funny because you don't even realize. Right. This, Reference first story. <laughs> to I know. Answer, it, it answer is. this. So. And, and, I, and I saw something the other day, and this is not, not really that relevant to, to the same story, but there is an, an H-I-P-A, also pronounced HIPAA, <laughs> but it has something to do with something in Hawaii, and I don't even remember what it was. Yeah. I just remember and seeing people are using that for that. And there is technically, at some point, the Health Information Privacy Protection Amendment or something like that that was part of the, I don't remember what, Affordable yeah. Care Act or something. So there are things there, but they're not the thing that you are referencing at mm-hmm. all. We yeah. have HIPAA rights. Yes, you do. Just not right this minute. So anyway, <laughs> it's insane. And, and But... Uh, Actually, but seeing where we thought that chart was so funny and we really enjoy it, and then you see people actually using it to prove they're right mm-hmm. and not getting the humor. But this guy, he took all of them. It was just a masterpiece of what he did in that video. So we're going to share that. And uh, I love that somebody said, asking my name is a hip hop violation, which made it even funnier. Mm-hmm. So, and there's one that did a... You know, the TAPS microphone, the little t- t- that you get, mm-hmm. it's hip, uh, not hip, up, up, uh, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, but, you know, from the very beginning, that's what we've been saying. We harp on it all the time. Mm-hmm. You misspell HIPAA, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, um, there's got to be a certain assumption. That you don't know yeah. what you're talking about. And everybody else, it's just a typo. No, it's not a typo with these people. Yeah, Especially I, I, after you saw that guy arguing that this proved he was right. No, and I did, I told I told you the story, but I did find a typo within a piece of software this week that I'm trialing. And I sent the company, you know, whoever it was, basically a salesperson is the person I'm dealing with. <laughs> I sent it to him, and I just thought you should know that in this one place you misspelled HIPAA. Now, that was the only place I saw that was misspelled, but still, it was misspelled. And I figured, you know, it'll go on the, you know, update at some point down the down the road. No, they had that thing fixed the next day yeah. and rolled out an update. Well, you know, that's what you would have done. You'd have been like, <laughs> let me get to that page and fix that. I was... I was pretty shocked. I was impressed too, but you know, you're, yeah. you're changing a piece of software. Um, you know, it's not small and you're but pushing out an update. It's text. Yeah. We'll go with it. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, let's talk a little bit about something else that, um, uh, that's happened and we haven't talked a lot about it, but there's been a data breach that's affecting a lot of people. Yeah. And, uh, this is coming from, uh, the Electa, E L E K T A, Electa. Uh, data breach. Yeah. And it's it's a growing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it just, they keep adding it. But we talked about offshoring with BAs, and this is a Swedish company that does a lot of stuff that has to do with radiation oncology and, and those kinds of things. And this breach just keeps growing as far as the number of people that are reporting it and what has happened and all those kind of things. But then it's also created this whole thing about, well, what happens when it's offshore? 
And I didn't know my data was going to another country. And, you know, granted, it's Sweden, which I used to have a programmer that was from Sweden. And he always said, yes, we have a military, but we might make it an hour before we all gave up. <laughs> <laughs> but so at any Sweden? rate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Sweden? Mm, yeah, that'd be you. <laughs> <laughs> but. The net of it is they have this whole conversation going on, not only about the data breach, but the fact that this stuff was overseas and no one really, you know, knows how to handle a lot of these things. And, well, yeah, they signed the BAA, but it's not enforceable. And so many people that think, you know, apparently that going back to what we were just talking about, there was somebody in Canada claiming their HIPAA violence, their HIPAA rights were being <laughs> <laughs> maybe they have dual citizenship uh, i don't know i don't know but it, it it was a pretty interesting article considering how much we had talked about the concerns when you do offshore and all the things that you need to worry about and here we are if you want to catch up this data breach there's information there i don't have time to put it in the episode we got a link but we really wanted to talk about some other bits of news and uh, it's not a complete squirrel episode, but I did want to make sure everybody saw it, uh, especially as we head into these other conversations, because this will become a bigger and bigger topic as we have things that progress in the regulations forcing people to report things and know where their data is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Check it out. If you haven't been involved in it, we picked up some clients from it. Uh, some, an, an unfortunate way to get them, but uh, at the same time, some just read about it and said, I don't want that to be me. Yep. So check it out. But it does involve a lot of questions about having vendors in other countries. It does. All right. We will now circle back around to something we talked about a few weeks ago where you probably heard me in the corner, <laughs> rocking back and forth. <laughs> sucking your thumb. <laughs> With sucking, yeah, I know. <laughs> so we talked about the Kaseya uh, hack and, you know, how it was affecting MSPs and IT professionals mostly, but also their clients and all that good stuff. And we have an update on that story. Yeah. It seems Not a good well. One. Yeah, we, we talked a little bit about, well, we talked about the, the, the ransomware gang kind of disappearing. The R evil one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know, there's there was uh, an announcement I think today or maybe yesterday, late yesterday, that they got um, they got a, a decryption key, so they're rolling that out. Even as we speak, they're rolling that out. So that's good. However, Kaseya, yeah, you mean yeah, Kaseya, yeah, yeah. Kaseya has got a decryption key now. Yeah. So that that's good. Now what we don't know is, uh, and nobody's saying how they got it, yeah. uh, and they're not saying whether or not they paid yeah. anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like, yes. Um, it's a HIPAA the, violation for us to tell you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Uh. But um, as as uh, I started my, my morning this morning, bright and early, hmm, I noticed that CBS News reports that the world's top ransomware gangs have created a cybercrime cartel. There you go. And in our world, we call this uh, working together to share information and to help one another out, which <laughs> seems to be something the criminals can do. Yeah. However, the IT community uh, still struggles with being able to do that. <laughs> so um, I guess they figure there's plenty of customers to go around. There is no threat, and, and working together tends to help everybody. What yeah. is it? What is, what is the saying? All, uh, the rising tide lifts all boats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there you go. <laughs> so, you know, this does point to some problems. Obviously, they they do enough damage by themselves. Working together in groups is not going to fare well for for us. Yeah, and the names of these gangs that have now combined, or or they're they're balancing or helping each other out wizard spider twisted spider viking spider the hell with the spider and uh -huh. lock bit 
Yeah. So, so 2021 will be known as the year of the spider. <laughs> Calling that out right now. Um, <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Uh, <laughs> it's good. It's interesting. And I do like that, you know, it points out that it even incl- includes the name and shame sites. Mm-hmm. You know, the kind of like the name and shame. We, you know, the wall of shame. <laughs> Not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, they're taking a taking a page from our book. Uh-huh. So put them on the wall of shame. But you know, we point this out when we talk about four or five D and and some of the things that you should be doing there. One of them is to have or be part of what's called an ISAC. And <laughs> I laugh when I say it every time. But anyway, because uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like I I have ISAC when I get really tired. <laughs> but anyway. Um, so that that stands for Information Sharing and Analysis Center, and there's several ones you can join. We're putting together one, Carden and, and HIPAA for MSPs. We're putting together our own. And basically, you're just wanting to be part of some type of information sharing syndicate, <laughs> so that you can, <laughs> if they can be a cartel, we can be a syndicate. <laughs> but uh, you wanna you wanna be a part of somebody or or some group that's that's sharing information. What are we seeing? What's going on? What problems uh, are we facing, or should we be looking at uh, protecting ourselves against? Because yeah. there's so much information coming at you so quickly that if you're not part of that, and, and I know that you guys listening to the podcast is your information sharing and analysis center. It's the podcast, <laughs> but you know we're doing this once a week, and we're trying to feed you a week's worth of information in thirty minutes. And that, <laughs> And there's no way we can get it out fast enough or enough. No. I mean, honestly, we could do this every single day and still miss stuff. That's mm-hmm. how much is out there. But but certainly look into that. And, and again, it's it's part of what you need to be doing in, in most of the uh, cybersecurity frameworks and certainly within um, the 405D hiccup framework as well. Yes. Definitely get your ducks in a row. Mm-hmm. Some of you don't even know you got ducks. I know. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> That's the most important thing that you can know is that you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> so make sure you take the time to get to know that you don't know what you don't know. Do you know how many times I say things similar to that and people look at me like, you lost me way back. I know. It happens <laughs> to me all the time. <laughs> They'll be like, I'm not going to tell you that I've already stopped understanding you. Yeah. I'll just keep yeah. nodding. <laughs> right now, I don't even know what you're talking about, so I don't know. But anyway, um, so, so this brings us to our topic for today. I will let you introduce this one. Well, knock me down and steal my teeth. Double D's done told you that. <laughs> Which, for you listeners, was her exact response to me sending her the link to this article. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Not only did she send it to me in text, but she sent it to me in AI voice format. Too. <laughs> yes, with an Indian accent. And uh, it was fun. It was funny. <laughs> uh, so we've known, we've been telling you this stuff's coming. And, uh, you know, while uh, we, you know, when we had, we had uh, the guys on from the Caveat podcast and, and, and Ben and Dave, and we, we talked a lot about whether or not there was going to be privacy legislation. And this isn't as much what you would consider privacy legislation. You don't notify the individuals, but it is legislation saying you've got to let people know this is happening. You can't cover it up. Mm -hmm. And we, we know, and I'm sure many of you, probably know or suspect of companies that have covered it up. Mm -hmm. And there are discussions that I would hear and then I don't see it, but I can't prove it, you know, kind of stuff. So that's going to get harder and harder to do. And it's just a matter of time. When this came out, you know, the, it's one thing when we had solar winds and we were coming in. Is solar winds going to make a difference? Solar winds, we knew coming into the year that people are going to have to start paying attention because the the breadth and depth of that attack. 
And then we had the Colonial Pipeline. And everybody, you know, freaking out about gas. Mm -hmm. And then we have Kaseya. So they're coming, huge ones coming one after another after another. Yeah, and in between those, it was the JBS meat process. Yeah, boy. They they kept that meat went on. Uh, y- your meat kept moving, people. There are too many mm-hmm. carnivores. The they, meat kept they, moving. They paid a good penny. Yeah. In that, that ransom way. Yeah. Yep. But we knew it was coming. And in June, Senator Mark Mark Warner, he hinted about that there was some legislation. I think he and Susan Collins, uh, there's some others, they were working on it. And he kind of dropped a little you know, snippet, little crumb. Mm-hmm. And we got, mm-hmm. we got something out here. Um, and when they asked him about it, he said, well, you know, I think, I think the business community <laughs> is starting to see things a little differently now. Mm-hmm. And that this might be a good time to introduce this kind of bill. The debate, he said, now this is June. So this is before the Kaseya hit. Right. But, you know, so it's in between colonial pipeline Kaseya And the quote they had for him was, when we had this debate six or seven years ago, now we've talked about how different things are just since 2016. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the, to me, 2016 was the turning point. Okay. So six or seven years ago, the business community did not want any additional mandatory reporting. I think they now realize that they themselves are put in jeopardy if they don't have mandatory reporting. (laughs) <laughs> i.e. I'm worried about protecting me, but I might want to worry about protecting me, making sure other people are telling me what's happening to me. You're right. Yeah. And it's that whole supply chain topic that we've talked about so many times and where people are like, I don't know why we're worried about the supply chain. We need to do the little things ourselves. You know what? Even if I am doing, I'm still responsible for doing the little things, but if I ignore that, it doesn't matter what I do. You're blindsided. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you always want to know if you're in somebody else's breaches. <laughs> That's right. You know, I don't want anybody up in my breaches. Mm-mm. I don't want to be part of anybody's breaches. Nope. There you go. <laughs> so the whole idea of this new bill, though, that it, it, I don't know exactly. In July, I think that it officially was introduced mm-hmm. and it will require data breach disclosures by federal agencies, okay, fine, federal contractors, I mean, that's a broad swath, swath, Mm -hmm. swath, swath of people uh, and companies and critical infrastructure companies. Hello, healthcare and IT. Hello. (laughs) Among other things, but There's 16 critical infrastructures, and that's why we're getting into – Electrical and, and, you know, the electric grid is a big concern because if we're all functioning based on equipment and we don't have electricity flowing from somewhere, things aren't going to go well. Mm -mm. Not at all. Mm -mm. So the idea is that they would have to notify DHS, which we know means CISA, Mm -hmm. when there is an identified breach. (laughs) Ha ha. So uh, <laughs> that whole thing of I don't want to tell because then it gets uh, on the record and all of this that they're supposed to have an anonymous way to report and de-identify the information just so that we know what's going on without, you know, exposing any companies. So, you know, they think that that'll get them to report quickly, which then CISA can take actions and we can bring in you know, our cyber force to try to do something about it. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what they say because they're going to get the ability. They have to report. They want them to report quickly, but they get to do it anonymously. Don't Hmm. you think healthcare is out there going, what up? (laughs) Why can't we be anonymous? Well, I, I want to be, I'm part of the critical infrastructure. I want to switch to that one. (laughs) <laughs> well, you know, we do need to point out that every single state also has breach notification laws. In some levels, but many of them exclude health care, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, some of to them To be do. fair, 
That's for all the letter kitty people. <laughs> well, they, they exclude healthcare because healthcare should already be reporting. <laughs> I know, right? So it, it does that, and there's a lot of details. You know, we're not doing a deep dive on something that hadn't even passed. Mm-hmm. What we want to talk about, though, is all the terms that are going to be thrown around, all the discussions that are going to be thrown around about this, and it's getting bipartisan support. That's mm-hmm. that's a rarity <laughs> in these these times, and it's something that would be actually accomplishing something that's in the news that is not being made into some political shoehorn. So it does have a substantial chance, in my opinion anyway, and we know what that's worth, uh, of getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. At least it seems to. Now, I do want to make a few things of note, because right away I'm reading it going, oh, man, (laughs) (laughs) because they're talking over and over. They're saying covered entities will need to do X. Oh, man. Yeah. (laughs) Our covered entities will not need to do that. More than likely, they'll need to do that. Or maybe they need to do both. I don't know. But now we got a whole new problem of which covered entity are we talking about. Are we talking about the rules for this covered entity or that covered entity? So that's going to be a problem. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the HIPAA notifications thing versus the, you know, treated with dainty approach and and if they have you do both and you make one but you don't make the other is there a way to know Uh, see it's getting tricky Mm -hmm. you know who knows how that's going to work with the critical infrastructure thing they do usually have a carve out for it but i don't know but i'm not going to try to guess (laughs) on whether or not it's going to get anywhere um, I don't think it's completely out of the question, and it, it, it's totally doable, and it could be done this year because oh, yeah. a recognized security practices high tech amendment was introduced last July. It passed in December, was signed in January fifth. Mm-hmm. So, hmm, is all I could say when I read it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to yeah. be a covered entity, David? I'm going to try to stay away from anything. <laughs> Think about it. You could fall under this as a covered entity other th- under this and be a BA under healthcare. I know. I know. I, <laughs> when I looked at this, I'm like, my first response was, yay, more stuff for us to, you know, to have to solve for, <laughs> which keeps us in business. And then I was I like, wait that. a minute. Wait a minute, though. This is going to put more stuff on me, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. That, that includes my company. Yeah, I don't want to have to do it. Uh, I want to help other people do it. I want to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but isn't that what most uh, MSPs say? Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I don't need to do it myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not a, I don't need to. It's I don't want to. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's 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 more work. And it goes back to a conversation we've had before, too, about we can't get people to do what they're supposed to do now. And they're, you know, looking at, hey, let's make it more difficult to do things. Well, I go, you know, I go to people now like, hey, you need to report this. And I don't even follow up with them half the time because I, I can just tell by the look on the face this this is going nowhere. Yeah. Or yeah, as, as one doctor told me, we just want to move forward, sir. <laughs> uh, okay i can read between the lines on that one uh, uh, that kind of we time. don't want to look back we want to move forward Sir, <laughs> i'm thinking to myself <laughs> you can't move forward with your head where it's at because <laughs> In order to move forward, you're going to have to understand where you're at right now. Yeah, I know. It's not a good thing. <laughs> but, you know, one of the things I saw in the uh, uh, the CNBC article about this is that they point out, and, and uh, you know, let me just see if you saw this part. There's a debate or discussion about if it hadn't been that FireEye spotted the intrusion and reported it because FireEye 
that's what they do. If they hadn't noticed this intrusion and reported it as a nation state attack on their own systems, still be sitting there. Then, well, you know, let's say somebody else found it and notified Solar Winds. And the big question in the big debate, which no one will know, no one will know, is would we ever heard about it? I mean, that goes back to the tree in the forest thing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it it's could have been hidden. It could have been hidden. And mm-hmm. nobody know. It, somebody could have shut it down. And then, you know, it, it's, but you've got layers of complexity that are insane as mm-hmm. far as liabilities and contracts that they've signed. And, you know, there's all the non-disclosures and, and who I've got to notify first. And, I mean, it's just one thing after another that you face when you're dealing with this. But the big question is, how many happen that we don't know? That mm. A are, lot. Yeah. I, I would... I would wager that several happen that we don't know to create the environment that we're in right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the bad thing about it. And that's, you know, to some degree how we ended up with, with the safeguards within HIPAA is that the industry or when an industry doesn't police itself, then somebody steps in and does it for them, mm-hmm. you know, and that's, that's where they end up having compliance and the regulations and laws and everything else because you're not doing a great job yourself. So somebody has to step in. Well, and then we have to face that even though that's happening, you look at, I mean, we talk about HIPAA's been around since 2005. The HIPAA security rules existed. However, healthcare is known as being some of the worst at cybersecurity and, and mm-hmm. having the highest number of attacks and you know, granted, it, a lot of that has to do because the data is so valuable, but that doesn't mean we're definitely better than we were even two years ago. Mm-hmm. But we're still not where we need to be as in somebody needs to be paying attention. Yep. Well, I, I think for the longest time, we've approached this problem probably in the wrong way. I think we've approached it mm-hmm. as... Healthcare is doing a terrible job with this, and we need to put all these solutions in place to address it. I don't think the yeah. problem is a yeah, lack of solutions. Yeah. The problem is a lack of understanding and caring about Attention. the problem. Yeah. yeah. Because that, yeah, I mean, we've talked about that before. This is not something you throw money at. Mm -mm. Just adding layers and layers and layers that you're not paying attention to only makes it worse. It doesn't make it better. And in fact, I think we see that often on the, on the Poneman studies that we review every year, which there's another one I'm sure out. I haven't got time to look for it. Yeah. But uh, that one of the ways, top ways to make it more expensive is to add complexity. Yeah. But you're right. That's there's so much of well, throw some more money at it. Mm-hmm. You know, well, automate this because I don't want to have to sit in a training class. I don't <laughs> want to have to write some paperwork. I don't want to have to complete a checklist. Yeah. Well, it's it's funny that you know I'm starting to change the conversation a little bit with people that I talk with to say, you know, I ask them, do you have a cybersecurity program? And then you know, I, oftentimes they'll say something like, well, what is that going to cost me, and what what all is involved? And I'm like. Well, two thirds of it's your work that you have to do. Yeah. It's your people and it's your processes. Yeah. We only provide the technology piece. So even if you never hire us, you should be doing these other two things already. Yeah. And, and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so and that's it, where we come in. We help you figure out the people and the processes and make sure that the technology is taken care of. So that it fits into the people and the processes. Mm-hmm. See, that's why we work so well together. It's like peanut butter and chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Two great things that taste great together. Or maybe you're a left Twix and I'm a right Twix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, who knows? But um, but no, it it is it is just that. It has to be something where you're looking at the the true trifecta of people, processes, and technology. And, and if you read anything about cybersecurity, you should see that over and over and over again. It's three things, people, process, technology. 
And if you can throw technology at it all day long, if people and processes aren't there, it will fail. And mm-hmm. we, you know, that's what we're seeing. These people that are doing that, they're like, well, I've got all this cybersecurity stuff and I've got the IT person. And I've got this, but I still had this happen. Yes, because you're not doing the other stuff. You got yeah, three it. doors and you got two of them open. <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why people got in the house. One, um, do, one doesn't even have a door on it. <laughs> right. And so uh, I saw this chart, um, and I know we don't have it today, but I sent it to you. It was a company that did this on a webinar, and I took a screenshot of it, but they, they took the people, process, and technology, and they basically said, this is what you get if any piece of it is missing. And so yeah. it was, you know, are you missing one piece or two pieces or all three pieces or whatever? And it broke it down into every way you could possibly – put that, that piece in place of what was missing and every single one of them had a terrible outcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you've got the technology, but you don't have the people in the process or you have the process. So you don't have the people with technology. You got the people, you don't have the technology, all these different things. It just, it doesn't work. It's the three legged table <laughs> <laughs> that if you don't have all three legs, guess what? It just falls over. <laughs> and all three legs need to be equal length. Uh, exactly. So you gotta, you gotta give all the, the, right level of attention yeah but, don't uh, give all the attention over here and then you got two long legs and one little short one you're better <laughs> off having three little short ones <laughs> yeah you are <laughs> uh, yeah at so least anyway. you're sitting <laughs> that's all i'm saying yeah you know uh yeah some of you's cybersecurity table looks like a plate on the floor <laughs> <laughs> It looks like a sitting spin. <laughs> and then, yeah, there you go. Some have a lazy Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going around and around and get nowhere. Yeah, until you, until, until you put those, you add all three. They have to be equal. Yeah, but you're absolutely right. That chart was awesome when you sent it to me. I'm like, hey, we're going to be using that elsewhere. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. But anyway... The uh, big thing that we want to know is what will happen. What's going to happen with that? You know, I'm, I don't like talking about ransomware, but it's unfortunate. There's there's continuing stuff to come out. There's a whole new stopransomware.org, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. The new website that's come out, 405D is tied into it. NIST published a new specific cybersecurity framework that's just focusing on preventing ransomware. Yep. So it's clear that we can't ignore this stuff and that it has been ignored, as we said, you know, or they've just thrown money at it and not given it the attention that it deserves to have a solid three-legged table. (laughs) So I can set my computer on it. That's all you need to think about. You yeah. know, or will I well, sit by a really expensive bourbon in the middle of this table? <laughs> that puts it on a whole new level for me. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, with but, you, uh, it'd be your most your most expensive new like 4K camera. Sit it in the middle, yeah. David. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, so um. You bring up ransomware. I know we've we've sent out emails on this, but just for the listeners, uh, there is a ransomware summit that Don and I will be speaking at next week. So as you're oh, listening yeah. to this, it's actually the second day of it. You can still register for it. But anyway, if you go to ransomware.live, uh, there's a whole entire two-day summit. It's going to be us and a bunch of other speakers, including the FBI, talking about ransomware. Oh, and- that's our bad, William. Sorry. We'll post it out on all of our social media. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. push it out there uh, since we didn't mention it earlier, but um, but definitely check that out. And um, even if you can't get in, but on the second day and maybe watch some of the replays and things like that, it's going to be uh, well worth it. William puts together uh, great summits, and um, and he's bringing in a ton of talented speakers. And great yes, I say that because yeah. I say that because I'm one of them, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, most I, people I, say, you know, David, most people would say, I am honored to be on this uh, schedule with all these great speakers. Not, it is great speakers because I'm there. Look at the difference in us. Yeah, you should be honored to be speaking with me. 
That's all I'm Such saying. Such a cooper. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I am I am interested in Stephen Ram, Ram, Ramey. I think that's how you pronounce it. His the the title of his topic is Super Bad, not McLovin Ransomware. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, I have got to gotta hear him. I got to hear how he's going to bring in McLovin and the Super Bad movie into ransomware. That's got to be that's got to be a fun one. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm interested in that one for sure. And, and then there's a lot of other ones talking about cybersecurity ransomware. Whose fault is it? Who's to blame? What's the FBI doing about it? You know, managing the, the attacks. Don and I are going to be talking about ransomware uh, prevention, I believe. <laughs> I think we're talking about ransomware and healthcare and, and how it's a little different. Yeah, that's right. How it impacts healthcare. Yeah. And then you're going to be on a panel, I think, right? Yeah, about paying or not paying and the pros and cons and what to worry about. Yep. So um, anyway, lots of good stuff there. So check that out. Ransomware. Yeah, they're going to pay or not to pay. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. Every time I hear that, I do that. Though. Yeah, to but pay or not? To pay or not to pay? Nah, I just go bald. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. And your security looks like a bald head. <laughs> Nothing there. But um, but anyway, check out ransomware dot live and uh, get more information on that. I'm sure that'll be around even after uh, the thirtieth. So check that out. I, Anything else you want to talk about, madam? No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> She's like, madam? What? I'm like, first of all, are you talking to me? <laughs> all Processing, right, please wait. Yeah, no uh, kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's our show for today, folks. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening. Be sure to share us out in all your favorite social media sites. If you have any more that are sort of your favorite, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, go to Twitter. Look at all the craziness around hip hop. If you hadn't got, in, got into that yet. At least go see uh, the vid that's going to be uh, on the website. God, that guy is hysterical. Yeah, it, it's worth it. So uh, for Donna and myself, remember, hip is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims. The show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.